Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a long time. Been uh, been pretty busy this summer with family uh, and other stuff, but now I'm back with another video uh, because I've been getting a lot of questions about this through Facebook, through the YouTube channels. What charger should I be installing for my EV car? Uh, so today I don't have the ultimate answer uh, because everyone's needs is different. So I'm just going to show you my journey and what I've installed at home. Uh, we do own two EVs, so our setup is quite particular for our needs. Um, so you'll pretty much see what we have and see what works best for you. Uh, the questions I usually get is, um, what type of charger should I be getting? Is level one charger enough for me? Should I need a level two? Should I have hardwire? Should I be with a plug? Should I use NEMA 1450 or another one? Do I need 30, 32, 40 amperes or 48 amperes? So yeah, that's a lot of questions new EVs, um, new owner um, actually get. So I'm just gonna tell you guys all the information I have and show you my setup. And then afterwards, you guys can decide what's best for you. All right, so let's get to it. I'll show you what I have. So let's start with the setup I have in the garage here. Um, so we do have two EVs. One car is parked outside all the time and one car is always parked inside. Even in summer, um, I do park my car inside. It's just a habit. Uh, we do have a baby, easier to come from the, ho from the house and just uh, put everyone in the car loading also uh, stuff unloading stuff it's just much easier for us so we do always park our tesla inside um, and we decided to actually have two chargers for um, for the evs so one for each uh, you don't necessarily need that but that's a decision we made and made sense financially since we do get subsidies here in quebec we get 600 dollars per charger um, and the wiring was almost already done for us since we already own the other EVs. Um, for those who follow me, I used to have the RAV4 Prime, I got the BZ4X, the Ionic 5, and now we have the Tesla Model Y. And my second car is the Ionic 2020 EV. So as for the Tesla, I just really wanted to have very easy connection. So that means like Tesla charger with a Tesla car. You don't have to use a Tesla charger. You can get any other charger you want. Um, but I wanted to get something that's uh, not, I would say compatible, but like, you know, the brand goes together. The cool feature about a Tesla charger is the fact that one, it's just a charger and it just, you know, you put the, the wires just hanging from the charger itself. So you don't need a separate um stuff hanging in to put the wires it does it already on the charger itself the second thing is this is rated for 48 amperes so that means this is the max usually you can get a charger my car does not take 48 amperes which is fine this one is a rear wheel drive tesla model y it takes 32 amperes here in canada why did i install a 48 amperes well You'll see, I install 48 amperes for this one, and even my outside charger is a 48 amperes. A lot of people ask me this question. Why do I get a 48 amperes if I don't need it? So the answer is pretty simple. I don't know what car I'm gonna have in five months. I don't know what car I'm gonna have in a year. So I do not tend to keep my cars that long. And as you may notice, the BZ4X I used to have would only take 32 amperes. But the Ionic 5, that I bought afterwards can take 48 amperes. So that's where the difference is. You might as well go with the highest charger out there because you'll never know what car you'll end up having. If you're sure for the next 10 years, you're gonna have a car that only takes 32 amperes, it makes more financially sense for you to actually buy a charger that does 32 amperes or 48 amperes, whichever the car you get. But you do have to take into consideration that a 48 amper car I mean, sorry, a 48 amper charger, you'll require a thicker cable to install. So in this case, I'm just gonna... In my panel, oh, by the way, guys, I have two panels because I do have solar panels and a solar generator. Right now, I'm actually supplying the power, part of my power to the house with some critical loads here. So this is everything that's powered by the solar generator right now, which is running. Uh, so it's basically lights, microwave, the furnace and whatnot. Um, and the rest is on the main panel. As you can see, I switched some circuits from here to the other one. Yeah, missing a cover here, guys. I will replace it. 
Uh, so I have two chargers, one running on the 60 here, 60 amperes. That's the one with the Tesla. And I have another one that's outside, which is also 60 amperes, which is here. It's plugged in. So for these, you will require for 48 amperes, I believe it's four gauge or six gauge wire, which is more expensive. You know, obviously it's running through here. This is connected to the Tesla charger. By the way, guys, this is up to code uh, where I live. Since it's off the ground, this is fine to use Romex here. So that's what I've been told with the, uh, with the electrician. Uh, we're in Quebec here in Canada, so rules, that's what I've been told. But as you can see, the other ones are in a pipe because, yeah, they're running through lower floor. So this is 48 amperes charging. And what's neat about this is when you press this, give it a few seconds, the car will actually react to it. Let me get actually close to it. There you go. It opens up and plug in and it's done. So that's one, another reason why I got this charger because like I said, Tesla to Tesla, they talk to each other much easier. And then, yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna put this back and I'm gonna show you guys what happens if you wanna park the Ionic inside and I want to charge it with the Tesla destination charger. Well, I got an adapter for you for that. So we have A to Z here, which makes adapters for Tesla to the J1772 plug, which uh, the Ionic and all the other EVs takes, which is not Tesla. So this is an adapter we have, so we just have to plug it in here and I can charge the uh, other EV if I want to. But like I said, we rarely park the car inside. We only always park the, uh, the ACV, the uh, Tesla here. So we don't really use it, but at least it's here, it's available. And eventually all the plugs will be going to NACS to Tesla plug. So that's why I, I figured, you know, let's just get a Tesla plug here. So that's for the setup inside. So like I said, this is a 48 amper. Uh, for the Tesla here. Let me show you what's outside. All right, so let's go outside. So this is the wiring that actually goes outside here. Um, and this is the other EV guys. Like I told you, the Ionic 2020 EV, which is always parked outside. The charging port is here. This car also takes 32 amperes um, so I don't need a 48 amper charger, but I still installed one guys. So the charger is right here. I have the Pulsar Wallbox Plus or Wallbox Pulsar Plus. Sorry guys. And this one is hardwired. So it's the one that does 48 amperes. So obviously when I plug it in, the car will only pull 32 amperes. But like I said, let's say I buy another car. At least I'll be equipped with 48 amperes charging for both chargers. Um, like I said, the wiring is more expensive for this one. Um, it's the same thing as the Tesla one and it's longer too. I have to go all the way from the panel to here. Um, so like I said, it's a long-term investment, especially if you're gonna stay in, a, in this house for a long time, might as well do it the first time right and do everything the maximum you could. And then afterwards, you don't have to redo your wiring if you get a more a car that takes 48 amperes. So, like I said, this is a different kind of style. It's the one that had, doesn't actually have the wire around it. So you have to put a different nozzle here so you can wrap around the, the cable. And then for me, it's very easy. I just put this, pull this out. And then I usually park the car a little closer. It's my wife's car. She parks it closer and she charges this. Uh, my panel can actually support both cars charging at the same time. Um, so the load is, is actually not bad. Uh, they can both pull uh, 32 amperes at the same time and we're still good. So one last thing I forgot to mention guys, for the charger that's outside, as you may notice, it was a J1772 charger, so it does not fit the Tesla charging here. So what do I do if my Tesla is parked outside and my Ionic is parked inside? As I showed you the Ionic that's parked inside, I do have an adapter, but same thing for the Teslas. All the Teslas that are delivered, they always come with the adapter here. So this is a J1772 to NACS or Tesla adapter. And what you can, I can do is pretty much plug this for the charger outside and I'll be able to plug my Tesla with the outdoor charger. 
So either way, any cars could be parked anywhere and they'll both be able to charge at its fullest um, rate amperage with the adapters that are provided or the one I bought for the uh, Ionic EV. So that's the setup I have at home. Uh, like I mentioned, this is not something you need to do uh, for, your, uh, for your home. Uh, some people, you know, uh, have one charger, even if they have two cars, two EVs, because you don't get to charge your EV every single night. We're just more into convenience here. Uh, it's just easier for us to charge um, outside or inside. We don't have to move cars. We do have a baby. So wh whatever that's hassle free for us is what we chose. Um, but like I mentioned, you know, you can pretty much live by, you know, just with one charger, even if you have two EVs. Uh, the other thing is, um, I do had comments mentioning why do you even need to charge at 48 amperes, even if your car is capable of, if you're parking your car at home for 10 hours and you don't need to charge faster. That is actually true. Like I said, I don't even charge my Tesla or my Ionic EV every day. I charge it maybe every two, three days, you know, when we're almost at 30, 40 percent, depending, you know, if it's cold outside or not. Um, where it gets interesting is, let's say, you've done a lot of, you know, uh, you've been outside, you've driven a lot and you come back home and you're almost empty and you do have to go back outside. Instead of going to a fast charger, having a fast charger at home, let's say, well, it's not going to be a DC fast charging, but charging at 48 amperes versus 32 amperes will make a slight, a slight difference on how much, you know, it'll charge faster your car. So you can go back out faster, you can have a better range. So like I said, it's not mandatory. It's pretty much, you know, having the fastest charge possible with the car, even if it's capable of. I know the Ionic 5s used to have some issues, I believe, with charging at high rate at 48 amperes. It was overheating the, uh, the charging port. I'm not sure if Hyundai actually uh, fixed that, but like I said, you know, it's not mandatory, but you know, it's, it's a good feature to have. Uh, last thing, like I mentioned, it's more expensive to install a 48 amperes versus a 30 amperes and 32 amperes. And something to really consider is portability of the chargers. If you want to use your charger somewhere else, let's say you have it at home and you have a cottage and you want to transport your charger somewhere else, do keep in mind that 48 ampere chargers are hardwired. So that means there's no plug for it. The wire goes directly into the charger and it's pretty much fixed. You cannot remove it. Contrary to the 40 amperes or the 32 amperes, those are plug-ins. That means you can use an MF14 or a 1450 or I believe 650. Uh, by the way, the standard is going into 1450, so might as well you know, just get with that. Um, and those plug uh, plug chargers or portable chargers means you can have a plug at home here or even have a plug at the cottage. You can just unplug it and bring, in, uh, bring it with you. Um, and you can actually not have to install a charger at different places. So that's another thing you want to consider as well. The last thing you want to consider is... Um, different chargers have different quality of cables. Uh, some cables get much more rigid in the winter. So that means when it's cold outside, especially here in Canada and Montreal, sometimes it gets minus 20 degrees Celsius, uh, minus 30, very rare, but it does happen sometimes. And even other places in Canada, um, I believe in Edmonton, it's pretty cold out there. So different chargers have different type quality of cables and some get more rigid in the winter. So you might want to do some reviews before buying one. If you do live uh, somewhere where the climate gets pretty cold and your charger is outside, you don't want to battle with your cable because they're so rigid and you're barely able to plug it to the car. Uh, here in Quebec, we do have local producers of uh, manufacturers, sorry, of, um, of EV chargers. Uh, EV DVD being one of them, which is reliable. It's been actually appraised by a lot of people where the cable doesn't get stiff in the winter. Uh, it's made in Canada, made in Quebec, and um, apparently the warranty is pretty good too. So these are different things you want to consider when buying uh, an EV charger. I guess that uh, sums it up uh, for me. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, any comments, or any other recommendations or videos I should be doing, please write them down in the comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as well if you want to be notified for the next video. Uh, and maybe the next video I'll make a video about the solar panels and the solar generator if you guys are interested. All right, thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next time.